So look, I know most of you guys watching this video want to make money online and hit the magical 10k per month, but most of you guys are brand new beginners or totally broke. You see all these people crushing it on YouTube, doing SMMA, drop shipping, and even day trading. You can't help but wonder how the f are they doing it? If you've ever felt this feeling of watching all these people make money online, yet you can't figure it out for yourself then this video is for you. Because in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get to $10,000 a month online from the comfort of your own home. With nothing but your iPhone and a little known software. And the best part, you literally don't have to pitch anyone. In fact, I'm gonna show you how to copy and paste our exact strategy so that you can get business owners begging you to give you their money. But before I do, let me really quickly break down why you're probably stuck. Most people waste hours and hours of their lives watching their favorite guru on YouTube, but the problem is all they talk about is mindset or show you their lifestyle. You see, most of them don't actually show you how to go out and get clients and then get them amazing results at the click of a button. And in this video right now, I'm gonna pull back the curtain and give you everything that you need to go out and get your first client in 2024. And then I'll even show you everything that you need step by step to get them amazing results so that you can consistently keep scaling. Because when you master the art of going out and getting clients and then getting them amazing results, you'll be able to finally hit 10K per month. With that in mind, this video is a masterclass on how to get your first client in 2024, even if you have zero experience or you're totally broke. So sit back, relax and let's dive in what we'll do is we'll set up a basic kind of website like joe joel said in the inside of go high level we have all these different website templates that we can pick from there's like over a thousand of them for different niches and industries so basically we take one of these templates we spice it up a little bit you know it has a lot of stock images and things like that on it and it has like the do lore you spice on the it up for each client or do, like that you call or do you spice it up one time you're saying in general for the template just one time for the template so i'm a big advocate of picking a niche and like sticking with that niche um and so in this example you just need to create one template and you can use that same template so let's say your niche is plumbers uh, you could create a plumbing website template and you're just sending that same template out to all the plumbers that we're reaching out to we don't want to have to create a whole new website for every person that would take forever and we'd only be able to reach out to a couple people a day like the name of the game is volume. We definitely want to hit a bunch of people, but we can hit them all with the same template. And then once we actually get a yes from that person, hey, yeah, send me the website. I'd love to check it out. And they're like, hey, we really like this. Then you can customize from there after they've actually like said yes. But for the for the first part on the initial outreach, we just want to show them that we've done a little bit of legwork for them and that we're reaching out to give them something day one. Um, and we're not just saying, hey, we can do all this stuff for you and we can build you a website and have nothing to show. We wanna show them some of the actual proof of what can we've done. Can you show an example so, of a spiced up website that you've sent out? Yeah, so this one right here, um, this is for like a vet. So, you know, something like this. We've so actually- So Furry Friends is not an actual, this is a template. This is just a template, yeah. So okay, cool. anyway, you know, we actually fill in the text with real text because a lot of them have like Laura Mipsum, that like Latin text filler yeah, text. Yeah. We yeah. actually update that and we just so use AI. Yeah, we use ChatGPT to like add a lot of this text in here and then, um, you know, maybe add some videos, stuff like that to the templates. And then this is what we're sending out to our client. Um, so from here, this is where we... Do the outreach so once we've spiced up the template for that niche then we're going to use this script right here for cold calling once we build the website this is the cold calling script that i use um i'm a huge huge advocate of cold calling cold calling is king a lot of people sleep on it because it's hard to do and you're going to get a lot of rejection um but i'll show you kind of the breakdown on what the conversions and the numbers look like later on this slide right here but this is the initial script that we're using. Um, I actually built this script with a gentleman who has made over like 10,000 cold calls in the past two or three years. He works for a huge tech company um, and his whole channel is on cold calling. And so he's really, really good at it. His company has like really good systems for it and they've tested like hundreds and probably even thousands of different scripts over the years. And so 
this is the script that he helped me craft um, and I paid him good money to help me build it out. But basically it's really simple. Hey, Abby, you know, this is Jasper from WebJuice. How are you? Um, the reason I'm calling Abby is because I noticed your Google profile doesn't have a website listed on it. Um, so we went ahead and built you a new one. Is having a website that captures more plumbing clients important to your business today? Um, basically, we're asking an assumptive question. We know like getting more leads and capturing more leads is important for most businesses. So most people will say yes to this question, which gets them we want people saying yes because ultimately it'll it'll lead them to say yes at the very end of the call to our final ask which is to book a zoom call for the for the next day or even later that day um but from there sorry from there we go you know perfect i work with other plumbing companies like yours to help them save time and get more customers through our website designs and automation tools since you're focused on saving time and getting more clients, how about we set up a brief intro meeting to further discuss what you're looking for and how WebJuice can help with that? Awesome. Be on the lookout for a calendar invite now. Did that come through? And then this, this final line here is actually to help with the show rates on the next call. We kind of want to set a little bit of expectation so that they know and they don't feel like super pressured and like, oh, I'm just going to be jumping on a sales call with this guy. And a lot of, we found a lot of people would would no show to our appointments that we'd set with them. But when we say this line, it kind of sets good expectations. Perfect. You know, the purpose of our meeting is to discuss your top priorities, show the website we built for you and continue the conversation. If we agree, there's alignment. If not, we can part ways. How does that sound? So it's very low pressure. Hey, we're not going to try to force something down your throat that you guys don't need. If there's alignment, great. If not, we can part ways. So this is the, the cold calling script that we use. When I say we, myself, and actually hired on a team of sales guys that are cold calling and doing this all day, every day. So anyway, this is the script we all use and it works really, really well. Okay, so I had a, a few questions. Why not take that extra? Well, actually, let's start with this. How many dials are you doing uh, per day? How are you finding these businesses to call? And then the last question is, why not also reach out to businesses with websites and still offer them one? Because I feel like the ones that don't have website are probably lower quality businesses, but they also might be in more pain, right? But honestly, if they've gone years without a website, wouldn't you say like they just never made it a priority? I don't know. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on all those. So how many uh, dials, where are you getting the leads and why not go after people with websites too? Um, so to your final question, why don't we, we go after people with websites? Uh, we do actually. So this first script right here, you know, the reason I'm calling you Abby is because I noticed your Google profile doesn't have a website listed on it. So that's our first pitch if they don't have a website, but in parentheses, if they have a website, we say we built you a new and improved website. So that's kind of the difference in verbiage that we use if they do have a website. Um, but what we do is we take a quick scan of their website. We check if they if it looks good, then we usually skip over that person and we just jump to the next business. We have a huge list of leads that we paid a, a dude from Fiverr to scrape for us. And so we're just kind of going through checking their website real quick. If their website looks good, up to date, has a good calendar booking system on it, has you know some forms and maybe a chat widget already, and it looks visually pleasing, then we'll usually you skip. skip. Okay, so you're looking for shitty websites or no websites. Exactly. Yep. Which is probably a lot of people, at least half. Ton, tons of them. So if I jump back into our account here, I'll show you just under like one of our smart lists, for example. So let's go to like uh, hair salons. Uh, let's do actually a like car detailing. So we have inside of high level, we have a list of hundreds thousands of leads that this this list for this guy who who cold calls for my business he has 700 leads here so we're just literally just clicking on them and then boom we can see all their information their name crane auto detailing their phone number right here if they have a website it'll show up right here so this one doesn't have a website we can see their total google reviews so we can see they have 13 google reviews they have an average five star rating which is pretty good but they could definitely get more Google reviews. And that's something we actually help automate as part of the website. We build out the website, we integrate a booking system. So for a detailing business, they have people booking details all the time. We can integrate that system into their site where people can just go straight to their website, book an appointment, 
And then after the appointment happens, we can automate that Google review request that sends out to that lead or, or that new client and asks them to leave a Google review. So this is also something we can kind of use as leverage on the call. Hey, we noticed you only had 13 Google reviews. Is that something, you know, it's a priority for you? Most people say, yeah, like reviews are important. Um, and that's another thing we can kind of talk about on the call. Hey, we don't just build websites. We also have automation tools that tie into our websites that will automatically text and email and follow up with your leads on autopilot. That's and great. So, uh, and and yeah. by the way, guys, anyone that's watching this, I have a full Google review campaign that you could use with high level to send an email and a text to all of the customers they've already had. And on average, it gets over 55 star reviews in one week if they have a big enough uh, database. I've had some clients that I've used it on that it gets over 105 star reviews in less than a week, which is pretty wild. So you could also uh, lead with that, right? Like their website is really good, um, but they don't have a lot of reviews. You could still call them. And you could say, hey, look, I know you have a beautiful website, uh, but I did notice you didn't have that many reviews. Like I actually built out a full Google review campaign customized for your business. I'd love to hop on a call and show you and use the same script. But instead of websites, you could do it for Google reviews. I'll link that video down below in the description for you guys. Um, okay, keep going. But that's perfect. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, we basically check their website. If not, all they have to do is just click this little phone call button and boom, the call's being made. So it's a very efficient way to have them all inside of the contacts tab here and go high level. And then we just call them through after the call goes through, we have a tagging system. If they answered or if they didn't answer, we'll tag them appropriately. So we can kind of uh, keep everybody organized of who we called and who we haven't called. And then we'll just jump, click this little arrow to the next lead. And I'm trying to find one with a website. So here's one. This guy go. does have a website. And so we can just double click, click go to, and then it'll open up their website real quick. We check it out. You know, this guy's website looks pretty decent. You know, it looks pretty good. We might check to see if they have like a booking system. Let's go click contact us. Uh, looks like they have a basic contact form, but that's about it. So Anyway, we, we might still call this guy and say, hey, we can integrate a booking system onto your site and we can still sell in a chat widget. Or, yeah, in a chat widget. Exactly. They don't have a chat widget. So we can still sell our software and integrate that into their current website. If they're like, nah, we really like our website, Jasper, like we don't want to get a new website. Awesome. We can we can waive that. We still have some automation tools we can integrate onto your current site. We can just embed them onto your site. And we can do that with the go high level, you know, calendar chat widget. Um, we can automate the Google reviews and automate their text and email marketing along with that. So anyway, there's still a sale that can be made, even if they do like their website and don't want to redo the website. That's great. Can you go 23? Like you could also be like 23 total reviews. Like that's not a lot relative, relative to the amount of people they probably see like a detailing a auto detailing they probably see like at least five people a day yeah on average right and if they're really bad maybe one to two a day but still over time that's way more than 23 so Absolutely. this is an example where you could lead with a google review angle as well definitely great point um so yeah, anyway, that's kind of the process of, of calling them. Um, let me jump back over to our script. So this is the script we use. How many dials do you, do you ex expect your sales guys to do a day? Um, typically, we shoot for 100. A lot of the guys that work with me are just part-time guys. They're like college in college or they're working another job. So um, here's kind of our breakdown of conversions that we've seen. Okay, Sorry. sweet. That's great. So let's say we make 85 calls. Um, you know, let's say we're calling for a couple hours. You can actually make 85 calls in less than six hours, but that's if you're being really, really slow and conservative and just maybe calling throughout the day sporadically as you have time. Um, cause like I said, a lot of these guys are in college, so they've got classes and homework and stuff like that. But out of the 85 calls made, we, we see about a third of them answer. So, you know, 33% actually answer the phone and we're just getting these, these numbers from Google maps. So the guy that I hire off Fiverr, he scrapes Google maps. And so all these phone numbers are direct lines to these businesses. So they're not like business owner phone numbers. They're literally just the, the line, the direct line of the business. 
So sometimes we're getting in touch with like gatekeepers and receptionists and things like that, but we do have ways to like get through those people as well. So out of the 85 calls, around 28 of them, we actually get to talk to on the phone. Out of the 28, we set about 10% of them, and that's pretty conservative. Um, like myself, I can set 15 to 20% of them, um, but not everybody's on the same like cold calling skill level. So that's kind of conservative 10%. So you get three of them to set an appointment out of the three, two of them show up to the appointment the next day, or if we can book same day appointments, they almost always show if it's a next day appointment, or if it's further out the next day, the chance of them showing up to that appointment, like decreases significantly. So you want to try to book them in same day later that day or next day, like, and anything after that will like decrease your show rate significantly. So you don't want that. Um, and then out of those two, I can close about 50% of them on the zoom call. So you get one close client out of approximately 85 to hundred cold calls made. Why haven't you guys set up an auto dialer? Like a dial uh, with like all these leads at the same time until someone picks up. We so we have we've tried one called Wave. We tried another one called Kixie. Um, and they're great. But the thing is, like we you lose do, the personalized touch. That and we are also checking out the website a little bit. Like we take a second before we call the person to look at their website, look at their reviews, and with an auto dialer, you can't really do that. No. Uh, and so we just found doing it the manual way and just like pulling up their website real quick, checking it out for a second and then calling them. We're only calling people that have a bad website or no website at all. Whereas if you used a dialer, you might get some that have great websites and they're like, nah, sorry, like not interested. We just got our website done by somebody else. So mm. we're like, we're trying to only have at bats with good potential prospects. And so the dialer sense. waters that down a little bit. No, great point. Uh, so anyway, so so that's the basic, you know, conversion. Oh, I had another question. Do you, why, why not send, because on that cold call script, I don't think you send them the website, do you? We, tr we try not to. So originally we did, we would say, hey, can we send you the website? And that was our pitch. Hey, we built your website. Can we send it to you? Um, but what we do now actually is we, try to get them on the Zoom call and use that, use the website as bait to get them on the Zoom call. Hey, we built your website. Can we show it to you either later today or tomorrow? And if they're like, yeah, tomorrow works good, then we're going to show them that website on the actual Zoom call mm. when we can get a chance of selling them. Because it's pretty impossible to sell somebody on a cold call. So we need to get them on that Zoom call. And we use that as bait. Hey, we'll show you the website tomorrow when we're on that Zoom call. And I think you're really going to like what we have for you. And so you're going to use that as like kind of leverage to get them on the call. That's great, man. But yeah. to a great, that was a great question because a lot of people will still ask, Hey, you know, I don't have time to meet with you. Can you just send it to me? We'll check it out. If we like it, we'll reach back out to you. You'll get that all the time. And so for those people, we've created a loom video and let me pull this up real quick. So um, I had I created one for like a nail salon that was pretty good. So let me pull that one up. <clears throat> so I have a Loom video. I'm just screen recording the website. So I'm not actually sending them a bare link just to the website template. I'm actually sending them a Loom video so they can actually meet me and see my face down here in the bottom left. Let me just play a second of this so you can kind of get yeah. it just up. Oh shoot! Let me slow down the. Uh... Hey, Jasper here with WebJuice. Just wanted to show you all the website that we built for your nail salon. Obviously, this is a rough draft, so if you like it, we can put your branding, your logo, and all of your company's information on it. Or if you hate the look of it, we can completely redo it, redesign it, and make it however you guys want us to. We're really good with web design, so we can make anything happen for y'all. So I'm just kind of going through the website, because if you send them a link to a website, they don't really know what goes behind the website. Yeah, they don't connect with you. It, the, exactly like that. And then also they don't know how the automation works. They don't know, Hey, when somebody submits and let me, let me fast forward this a little bit. When somebody messages us on this little chat widget here, you know, how does that work? And so I need to explain, Hey, whenever somebody messages you here, it'll automatically, you know, we, we can say, Hey, we can set an AI chat bot up for you. That'll message back and forth with your leads through this chat widget, or it'll automatically send them an automated text, letting them know that you'll be helping them soon. 
Um, you know, we we talk a little bit about the uh, let's see, the booking system here that we integrate on their site. Hey, you guys don't have to have people calling in and booking appointments with you anymore. They can just go straight to your site, go to your calendar, and book time for their their pedicure, their manicure, whatever it is. And then this is all automated. So if somebody books here, they're going to get an automated confirmation text and email and then reminder text and emails to make sure they show up. We can even integrate a payment gateway here. So they actually have to pay in order to book the appointment. So you can start collecting payment up front from people that book appointments. Um, just a lot of different things that I, it's easier to explain to somebody on a Zoom call than if they were just looking at the site themselves. That makes a lot of sense. Um... Do they actually watch the the looms? Or like, do you feel like that actually? I guess you can also send it and then keep calling back and be like, "Hey, did you get a chance to watch it? Did you get a chance to watch it?" Like, cold calling doesn't have to be a one and done game. Um, Definitely, you, you're trying to build a relationship with someone in a, in a matter of a minute. It's very hard. So, like, if you are the if you're diligent with calling back anyone you did send a loom to once a week maybe on like Fridays you do your loom follow-ups they're gonna appreciate that they're gonna be like holy shit this guy keeps calling me <laughs> I'm gonna watch a video <laughs> so yeah exactly we have a uh a tag too after we talk let's say this is um Let's, call, let's say they're, we've just called Best Nail Salon. They tell us, hey, you know, we don't have time to meet, but can you send us the website that you set up for us? We'll send them this video. And then we have a tag inside of high level that we can tag them with that says Loom Video Sent. And we can see all of the tags that we've placed on people. Um, and then we can go back and call them back. And we have like automated reminders that will remind us to call them back like five days later or a week later. Nice. Um, to the people that exactly like you said so we do follow up with them uh pretty strictly okay sweet and then in terms of leads like you, i showed you all these different leads that that we have and we have like tons of different smart lists and these are all the people that cold call with me and we've got even more here um but we you know it's 2670 leads and these are uh you know detailing businesses we get these off of Fiverr. Um, I use this dude here. His name's Ahmed Mayer. So if you guys want to hit him up on Fiverr, he can get you um, hundred thousand leads for one hundred twenty-five bucks, which is a no-brainer. Like that, it would take That's you so crazy. long. Yeah, it would take you so long to go through Google Maps if we just like pull up Google Maps here and you were typing in like plumbers near me or something like that. Um, it would take so long to go through here and there's no way to really organize and keep organized who you've called and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and this is what a lot of people preach like, Hey, just go to Google maps and start calling businesses. I go one step further. I pay Ahmed. He's scraping Google maps, but he can scrape the entire country. So you're not just limited to your area. Like you, he can scrape the entire U S you can import those leads into high level and then you can call them a lot more effectively and efficiently and quickly. So if you're going to be cold calling and taking it seriously, then I would definitely go this route rather than going to Google Maps because it's kind of hard to keep track of who you, who you called already, who you haven't. So yeah, that's that's my two cents on that. Love it, man. Um, what about objections? What are the most common ones you get? Oh, sweet. <laughs> um, there you you're, go. You're... <laughs> We have these are the most. You just gotta games. go. You just gotta go through your slides, and then I just don't have questions. <laughs> yeah, Th this will answer everything on cold calling. But um, you know, first one we already have a website we're happy with. You know, and this this is how we'd handle that. You know, totally understandable. I'm not expecting you to change anything today. You know, would it be fair for us to show you what we have to offer for you when you are ready to make a change with your site? So, um. You know, the owner or decision maker isn't available. We get that all the time for like uh, dentists or chiropractors, or just office-based businesses that have receptionists. Those are brutal, um, we yeah. A, we get a lot of gatekeepers. Um, and I've almost just moved away from calling those businesses. Yeah, I, 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 you know, one of the things that I tell people is like cold calling is excellent based depending depending on the niche. Because if you're yeah. talking to a, like dent, dental front desk staff are trained to not let you through right whereas if you call it yep. auto detailing you most of the time the person that picks up is the owner yep so 
Yeah, exactly. So we, we've kind of moved away from calling like, you know, those the dentists in the office based type businesses. Um, we're calling more uh, the niche that I go after is low ticket appointment based businesses. So like your barber shops would be considered a low ticket appointment. You know, you pay 20 bucks, go and get your haircut, a nail salon, a car detailer, anything that's a few hundred dollars or less. The person goes in that day, gets the job done and then leaves. Uh, those are the types of businesses we're working most with. And those types of businesses usually don't have receptionists as well. So it works out pretty well. Um, but yeah, you know, the owner decision maker isn't available. No worries. There are a better time to catch them. Um, you know, they might say, yeah, they're in the office this day or this day. And now that you know when the owner is usually in the office, you can just continue with the pitch like normal. That's what I train my guys to do is just, hey, if it's a receptionist, make them feel important. You could say something like, oh, so you're the one who makes all the big, uh, you know, makes the business run. And you're the one who who makes everything um run smoothly around here that, that's probably a, a bad way to say it but something like that make them feel important and then continue with the pitch sometimes they'll get you through to the owner or book you in with the owner but a lot of times they'll just be like yeah you'll have to call back another day and so you know now that you know the time that the owner is usually in um, you can try to get them to book for a day that the owner will be in the office but a lot of times it's pretty hard so pick your niche wisely um there, there are better ways to reach out to those office type businesses that have receptionists. So honestly, if, if it's a receptionist type business with a dedicated gatekeeper, you, like you're going to struggle. I, it's, I've, I've never heard of actually any person being like, I built a massive agency cold calling dentists, for example, but I have heard it for like roofing. So it's like, it, yep. it's not, it, and I'm not saying it is impossible, um, you just have to, the, the, the level of skill needs to be very high for you to get through gatekeepers consistently because their job is to stop you from getting through. So it's like yeah. you talked about at bats. If you're trying to call a, a niche that has a strong gatekeeper, the amount of at bats you're going to get, is going to be very few. And then you never get really good at delivering the pitch because you just don't have that much practice and or real, real life practice or implementation. So I, I'd probably just say pick a niche where you could easily more easily or, or, or consistently reach the decision maker, you know, at least for cold calling. Absolutely. For sure. That's a great point. Um, and then, yeah, a few others, you guys can take screenshots or whatever of these ones as well, but a couple different objection handles here. These are the most common that we get. Um, what are the other slides you got? Tonality of voice. This one's really important because you can stick to the script all day, but if you sound like you're reading a script and you sound like a robot, like no one's going to resonate with you and connect with you. So you actually need to be a human when you call. Um, stay paced through the conversation. If they're trying to speed you up and be like, "Oh, we're really busy right now. Like we got to we got to go." You know, sorry. Like just stay really paced with your script, and it'll slow them down. People like tend to mirror each other psychologically, and so. If uh, if you stay slow, they'll they'll also stay slow. Um, you know, don't speed up if the if the prospect speeds up. Control the conversation. Inflect downwards if you're saying a statement. Inflect upwards if you're saying a question. These seem like really basic things, but <laughs> when I first hired some of my sales guys, I was listening to the call recordings and they just sounded terrible. Um, and so that's what kind of caused me to create this. But um, sound friendly and polite. No one wants to talk to a to a robot, like I said before. Um, and then sound human. When Don't sound when you're cold calling. Like everyone thinks you gotta like sound like Jordan Belfort and be like, like sharp as attack. And it's like that's actually the opposite. You want to almost seem very non threatening. Like, uh, is this Jasper? You know, and obviously not with that question, but like it's that tonality of like even sometimes coming off as non-threatening and submissive can disarm the other person and then actually open the space for the conversation to be had whereas if you're like hey how's it going people are just like whoa too much you know it's you have to talk like a person like you would never call someone even a friend and be like hey it's, it's like yo what's going on it'd be more chill yeah that, that's a you perfect know, Hey, this is Joel with Agency Lab. How are you doing today? It's chill. Yeah, like that's uh, like if you can get them to say to this first line, "Hey, Abby, this is Jasper with from Web Juice. How are you?" 
if you can get them to say good to this initial question, like I'm doing good today, how are you? And they ask you back, you're basically in. Like if you can get them to say like, I'm good, how are you? Like the whole rest of the script is so easy. You're It's just a much more flowing conversation. They actually addressed you and like asked how you were doing. You can almost book them every time if they say that. Yeah. But a lot of times they're going to be kind of like hesitant at this point. You know, who is this? You know, I don't know. But that's, and you put, you know, like uh, Jeremy Minor teaches like intentional, I would call it like awkwardness. You could even be like, um, so yeah, the reason I'm calling you, Abby, you know, you could even add those little moments of pause so that it sounds more human. It's not just like the reason I'm calling you, Abby, you know, it's so scripted. Definitely. You want to follow the script, but you want to sound human. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. So I, I, I tell my guys, Hey, memorize the script. Like, don't, don't just read it off. Like actually get it down. Um, if you want to like hear how you sound, take out your phone and open your re voice recording app and like, listen to how you sound. And like, you can get a better gauge of like what you actually sound like if you do it that way. And then just kind of perfect and, and change things. Maybe that sound more robotic or scripted and change it to make it sound like conversational. So um, next we, you know, cold calling tips and tricks, schedule call calling blocks throughout the day. It's really hard to call for 15 minutes, you know, then jump on a, another appointment or if you're in college, you know, you start doing your homework and then you call another 15 minutes later in the day. Like you want to schedule calling blocks that are at least two hours long. So right here, schedule two hour minimum calling blocks so that you can get in that rhythm. Um, once you start making those first couple cold calls, you're probably going to be out of rhythm. But after those first five to 10 cold calls, you'll be in a pretty good groove and you'll just be able to flow a lot better and converse with people a lot better. And so that's why we make those longer calling blocks so we can get in that flow state. And then, you know, if if not calling all day, call morning, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is the times that we found our, we get the highest answer rate and then three to 5 p.m. Um, you know, call businesses obviously with no website or a bad website, scan over each website quickly before calling. Uh, don't send emails. We found it's just not very worth it. Um, we just send them, a, we usually ask them for a number that we can text that Loom video to rather than shoot them an email. And then, you know, be pushy, but not too pushy, know when to move on. Uh, that's that's actually a really high level sales skill to have, like knowing when you've lost and when to move on. Some people are unsellable. I can't remember the statistics behind it, but like, I, I think it's like 10% of people will buy from you no matter what you have to sell. Like they're just really easy lay down. Maybe it's less than that, maybe 5%. Um, but it's like 30% of people, no matter who you are, no matter what you say, no matter what you're selling, will never buy your stuff. And so you need to be able to gauge the room and say, all right, you know, this and move on to the next calls yeah. so you can be efficient and not just waste your time on people who are never going to buy. Um, and then the ultimate rule of, convert, of, of uh, communication, listen more than you talk and you'll find better success that way. That's why we have questions throughout our script because we want them to be engaging with us. We don't just want to be talking at them the whole time. So anyway, yeah, those are like kind of the cool calling tips and tricks that I put together. Sweet, man. Sounds great. Well, I think that pretty much covers it, right? Is there anything else that people need to know? Um, yeah, let me show you all this real quick. So this is kind of the pricing that I charge just to give you an idea of like how much you can charge businesses for these services. So you know, we've got a starter plan. We give them a three page website. So something pretty basic. We charge about a thousand bucks to set that up. And then we charge them a, we call it a, like a hosting fee slash software fee. We're giving them access to high level. We're creating their own sub account and everything. Yeah. But and now so it's high level with the website. So they're much stickier, much stickier, much stickier. Um, so we charge, you know, $97 a month, just something really cheap for this one. It's very basic. We're just giving them some basic SMS and email automations. When somebody submits a form on their website, we just give them a contact form and a chat widget. So that's really the only way they can capture leads on this plan. Um, unlimited, you know, we charge $2,000 for the setup, $197 a month, four-page website, everything from starter. Plus now we're giving them 
automated Google reviews, the calendar booking system on their site, payment processing if they want to process payments for the calendar, um, and more advanced SMS and email automation. So after somebody fills that contact form out or messages on that chat widget, we're going to have multiple different text and email automations and kind of put them onto a drip campaign um, to hit, hit them up more and make sure they turn into a paying client of the business. And then the pro plan, $3,000 setup, $9.97 a month. This is more of a done for you plan. We'll run, um, you know, we'll do ongoing SEO for their website, help them rank higher on Google. We'll run Google and Facebook ads for them. We'll do a weekly newsletter, you know, bi-monthly marketing consultation calls, AI chat bot that's connected to the chat widget on their site and uh, just a larger five page website. So I outsource all this to a VA. He sets up all my websites, sets up all the sub accounts. So like you really can automate this process. Um, you can delegate it. I shouldn't say automate it. You can delegate it out and uh, you can be driving sales and you can delegate out the setup and the uh, website setup and account setup to a VA for you know $5 an hour. You could hire somebody from the Philippines or South America, but yeah. I, it's amazing, I man. Well, thank you so much, man. And uh, I'm going to make sure everyone subscribes to your channel and uh, follows you.